everybody. Welcome to another video by Liminal Spaces. So today we're doing another story out of Ray Bradbury's Dark Carnival. Excellent, excellent book. Make sure you've grabbed it. The story today is called The Lake. And this is about a young child who has a friend that ends up drowning in Lake Michigan. Uh, I think they're just south of Chicago for this story. So it opens with this young boy swimming at the lake for the last time before they move to California. It's the fall. Everything is shutting down. All of his friends have gone back to school, except for, of course, the friend of his that drowned in the lake. And the boy, of course, feels very sad being at the lake where his friend drowned. And the boy wants some time alone at the lake. So he asks his mom if he can run up the shore. And his mom says yes, but stay away from the water. So he goes running up the shore. And because it's autumn, the wind in Chicago, if you guys, if you've never been to Chicago, the wind is insane in Chicago. It's not called the Windy City because of the wind, I don't believe. I think corruption and politics in the city. <laughs> but it is very very windy it's crazy and the wind is very cold so the wind plays a big part in this story the beach is deserted because the wind has begun to kick up in the fall it's about to get very windy and very cold of course because it's becoming winter so nobody's there the kid runs up the beach far away from his mother so that he can be truly alone and there's this little neat section where Ray Bradbury talks about how hard it is for a 12-year-old, especially if you live close to Chicago or in a city like Chicago, how hard it would be for a 12-year-old to get any time alone. But this kid gets to be alone because he runs far enough away from his mother. He can still see her down the beach as a tiny speck. And then he goes into the water, which he wasn't supposed to do. And he gets deeper and deeper into the water and he starts calling for his friend that drowned in the lake. Uh, his friend is a female and it turns out, I think, that he was in love with her. And he kind of feels like that they were soulmates, I believe, as we get further into the story. That kind of becomes clear. So he calls for her, calls for her, gets very deep into the water and realizes she's not coming back. So he comes out of the water and he builds half of a sand castle for her. And then he takes off and goes back with his parents. They jump on a train. He's got a really neat description of how a train has no memory. That as a train leaves a place, it forgets it. But then later when you get back on a train, if you come back, all those memories come flooding back. But they get on a train. They move to California. He's there for 10 years. He goes through high school, through college, starts studying law. He meets a woman. He gets married. And then for their honeymoon, they come back to his hometown. That's where the train metaphor picks up again about the memories flooding back. So they get back to his hometown. They go to the beach, literally the beach where he was. And while they are there, the lifeguard finds the dead body of a young girl. And the lifeguard explains that in the last 20 years or whatever, there's been like 12 people who have drowned and they've recovered all the bodies except one. So, of course, our person knows who this body is. And the lifeguard says, I found the person in shallow water somewhere down the beach. So our lead character wanders down the beach and says, this is where they found the body. And he looks down and there's half of a sandcastle built there. And he can see footprints that came out of the water and then go back in the water, but don't come back out again. So it's this kind of ghost story. And that's basically where it ends. He wanders back to his wife and the story's over. It is incredibly well written. I'm just going to read the opening. This is a very short story, by the way. If you haven't read this, it's like seven pages. You can get through this in like 10 minutes, honestly. So here's the opening paragraph. They cut the sky down to my size and threw it over the Michigan lake. Put some kids yelling on yellow sand with bouncing balls, a goal or two, a criticizing parent, and me breaking out of the wet wave, finding this world very bleary and moist. 
This story was well received. Ray Bradbury really likes this story, according to a little article that I found. He says that at the time that he wrote it, he felt like it was one of the best things he'd ever written. And I think I might agree with that, um, but I, I need to preface all of this. I think that Ray Bradbury became a good writer faster than he became an experienced writer which I, I know is kind of a weird thing to say. The, the they that put this world together for him are never mentioned again. Like, I was like, what? Is this some kind of weird Velt thing where somebody's building a world for this child to, you know, or what? What? what is going on? And that's just gone, right? <laughs> that very unique, strange opening that they are never mentioned again. I don't know if he's talking about his parents handed him this world or I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But uh, he, he, he waxes beautifully about the end of summer, about the wind coming and, and all of the hot dog stands closing. And when they close them, they nail them shut. So he says that the, the hot dog stands are like coffins where they nail up summer. You know, I mean, just really beautiful, interesting, weird things that he talks about in this story that don't have a lot to do with the story. Now, granted, of course, his friend died in the lake, right? The story's about death. So it does kind of make sense, but it feels like it's going way, it's doing a lot more than it needs to do. His prose, are, are, they're just really, really good. I'm not positive that he's gotten to the point as a writer where he can tie them in to literally what's happening so that we're on this crazy journey with him. You know, we're just, we're just experiencing these weird little montages, you know, about a world being created and then about summer passing and then about how trains work and i'm not sure i'm i'm not sure that they all fit together in a way that could really pull us along on a journey also the the theme of this story is very strange a, a lot of the things that i when i was doing a little bit of research on the story talked about how one of the themes in this story is moving on uh which i don't I don't see in this story only because I do not feel like this person moves on at all. If anything, I feel like they go backwards, which is a really strange thing. And I'm not saying that could never happen. You know, I'm not saying that a person can't be so crushed by something that they can't move on or that literally they try to move on, but then they get pulled back because of a place they go or a memory they have. Um, but that doesn't really seem to be like the way this thing works. It, it, it's very bizarre. And, and I wonder if it's just because it's so short. I'm not sure. But he gets married. And on his honeymoon, they go back to the hometown. They go back to the beach. He sees this dead body. And it starts talking about how he was really in love with this 12-year-old when he was 12. I think there's literally a part where he says it's not, it wasn't a dirty kind of love. It was a love like sand and water just being together. So he's, I think he's really suggesting that they're like soulmates and that, and by the end, I want to read the last paragraph to you as well. This is how he explains his wife at the end of the story. I walked up the beach to where a strange woman named Margaret was waiting for me, smiling. And all of this just feels very, very strange to me. I, I have a very hard time buying that someone died that this kid knew in grade school. I don't know, third grade, fourth grade. He can't get over it. And I'm not saying that that would never happen, right? But being an older person, having people pass away that are close to you, as I assume most people watching this channel have had, I think most of our audience is older. I think we've experienced death, you know. I I don't know. There was something about this that just didn't seem very realistic to me or didn't seem it, it seemed very selfish 
to me. I, I, I think, and, and I'm an 80s kid. That's another thing that I really need to bring up that I think is very important. We are all products of our culture. Nobody grows up in a vacuum. Everything we do is influenced by where we came from, right? And as an 80s kid, having a friend pass away in school, I don't want to I don't want to make light of this or mock this in any way because it's so beautifully written, but all I could think of really was Heather's, you know? <laughs> like somebody dies in your school and suddenly they were your best friend, right? Um, it, it's a very, I know it's a very kind of sarcastic point of view. And I know that they, these two children were close. I mean, he describes how they used to play together all the time. You know, they were good friends. And I have a good friend from grade school that I remember their name. I remember lots of time that we spent together. I have no idea what they look like. You know, if I pass them on the street today, I, I would have no clue. And I'm not positive how my life would have been affected if they would have passed away when I was 12. I don't know. It's just that life moves so fast when you're that young. And there's so many people because of school and moving. And I'm not sure. This this story, and I know, of course, it's, it's a ghost story. And the thing that you're saying is not, doesn't seem very realistic is the relationship, right? Not the ghost part. <laughs> I get that too, right? But I love ghost stories. But I feel like the only way a ghost story can really work is if everything else is completely normal, right? If you're in a completely strange world with completely strange people, and then there's suddenly this strange ghost... That's not really a ghost story. That's just weird stuff happening. You know what I mean? Uh, I feel like a ghost story, you need to have a relatively normal life for the ghost to be the thing. And in this story, I don't, I don't know if the ghost was really the thing or more if this person's obsession with their childhood friend was the thing. Uh, so, this is a beautifully written, wonderful story. Of course you should read it. The, the prose are just incredible. The, the, I, I think they're metaphors or similes. I don't know. That there's, Ray Bradbury's got all kinds of stuff going on in this, and it's definitely worth reading. He's an excellent writer. But I did feel a tiny bit weird. And maybe this is like the birth of his nostalgia thing. Maybe this is where he starts toying with the idea of the past being better than the present. And he just hasn't quite mastered it yet, you know. I'm not positive that young love is the best subject, as a 12-year-old especially, is the best subject for nostalgia. Especially when you're talking about your honeymoon with your wife. And I feel like, honestly, if somebody had written a story like this now, I think that... The person would have been obsessed as a 12-year-old. Their friend would have died. They would have felt like it was the end of the world. Then they would have gone off. They would have moved on. Uh, they would have uh, had a wonderful life. They would have got married. They would have come back here for their honeymoon. And they would have gone to the beach. He wouldn't have even remembered that anything like that had happened. And then suddenly, like the ghost would have appeared and he would have remembered everything and the ghost would have grabbed him and drug him into the lake. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that feels like a ghost story, right? And his poor wife would be left wondering what happened and why he drowned in, in the lake, you know? But this is more than that. This goes way beyond that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just feel like it doesn't quite... The, the, the theme... And the maturity of the writer doesn't quite match the brilliance of the writer, you know. <laughs> uh, because this story is in Dark Carnival. It is in other collections of his. It's successful. It's a well-written story. It's, it's just a little bit young, I think. All right. Well, that's, that's The Lake by Ray Bradbury. Definitely grab this book. It's totally worth it. It's excellent. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Anyone who watches this pushes this channel. I just got to say that. It's wonderful. Leaving comments is wonderful. Whether they're negative or positive, it's great for us. Please leave comments. It's wonderful. Uh, hit the like button if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe because we have so much of this stuff. And have a great day.